everyone and welcome to daily newspaper analysis which is presented to you by Law Seco. So today we will discuss two articles. The first article is from the Hindu newspaper which is titled as No Learning from Spanish Flu. This article talks about the flu which was the Spanish flu back in the year 1918 and that how we completely failed in taking any kinds of lessons from the Spanish flu in implementing during the time of COVID-19 and what steps could have been taken had we taken this thing into consideration have been discussed in this article. The second article is from the Indian Express newspaper, which is titled as Virus in the Village. So this talks about the fact that the second wave of COVID-19 has been more disastrous for the villages and the rural areas as compared to the first wave of COVID-19. What are the reasons behind it and what steps can be taken in this direction have been discussed in this article. And finally, we have the news in flash column. This newspaper analysis has been pre presented by me. My name is Sheva Khan and I am a law graduate. I had completed my law from Uttaranchal University in the year 2019. I have been a batch gold medalist and been a national level debater and a public speaker throughout my educational career. At Law Seco, I'm working as the current affairs expert and manager for free content and outreach. If you wish to connect with me or reach out to me, you can join me on Twitter as well as LinkedIn. Both my handles are available in the description. Let's see what is the multiple choice question from yesterday's discussion. Dongria Kond tribal community recently seen in news belongs to which state? Your options are Odisha, Jharkhand, Madhya Pradesh or Jammu and Kashmir. If you know the answer, put it down in the chat box. That is the comment below, comment section below. This is the descriptive question for the day. How do the experiences of past always should be taken in consideration to avoid mistakes in the present? Discuss in context of the Spanish flu of 1918 and the COVID-19. Let's get started with a discussion of our first article of the day, which talks about no learning from Spanish flu. So the year of 1918 had witnessed an influenza pandemic that was called as the Spanish flu and was seen to be compared with COVID-19 in social media. So it also says the article directly points out to the fact that had we taken the consideration and had we paid heed to the entire scenario of the Spanish flu in the time of 1918, we perhaps would have been in a better situation and might have been more prepared to deal with this catastrophe of COVID-19. So here the article mentions as to what are the lessons that could be taken from the Spanish flu. The first one is that most of the fatalities, that is the highest number of deaths, that was about 50 million deaths in the Spanish flu of 1918 were seen in the second wave. So just like the situation that is going on in the COVID second wave as well, wherein the second wave is now proving out to be more disastrous in effect, Similarly, the Spanish flu of 1918 had also had the second wave, which was more disastrous and had brought more deaths and fatalities. So the pandemic lasted for two years in three waves. And when in this, the second wave was more dangerous than the first wave. Similarly, the case with the COVID-19. Second, the major reason for the rapid spread of the Spanish flu were that the first, the public abandoned all the social distancing measures once the restrictions were lifted for the first time. Do you not think that it is exactly the same situation what has happened after the unlockdown has taken place after the first wave of the COVID-19? Yes, exactly the same thing has happened in the COVID-19 situation as well, wherein earlier in the first wave, people were taking a lot of precautions. They were not moving out unnecessarily. And that is why we were able to bring down the scope of COVID-19. But as and when the lockdown opened and we got into the situation of unlockdown, what happened was that people became very reckless. They completely forgot the norm of social distancing. We forgot about using masks and we became very reckless to the situation. And also the second reason which has been mentioned as per the Spanish flu is the unwillingness of the officials to impose restrictions during wartime despite existence of a new mutated strain. Now here, at that time, as we know, that 1918 was the time when the first world war was going on. And during this time, it was actually unwilling. The officials are actually unwilling to impose any kind of restrictions or whatever you would call as the lockdown, maybe. 
because that was the peak time of war and that is why they wanted most of the people to get into their club and they wanted huge and huge support for the war time and that is why despite the existence of a new mutant strain just like we have for the covid as well even after that the officials the authority they were unwilling to put up any kind of restrictions and similar has been the case with the covid-19 second wave as well now of course we are not in a situation of war but there have been various other reasons which have made the authorities unwilling to be very restrictive of any kinds of limitations regarding the lockdown the first and the foremost reason can definitely be the economy as we know that during the first lockdown there was a huge setback that was seen by the economic growth of the entire world and thus in the second wave it was for sure that even more economic damage can take place if at all more and more restrictions are put up regarding the running of industries social distancing etc the second reason as we all know are the elections in india now as we know that many other countries also they had held elections and india should have seen that those countries had to face more deaths after the elections because the people did not follow the norm of social distancing despite that fact our government chose to hold the elections and due to which the cases have you know skyrocketed in the entire country so these are a few reasons which which can be considered as except the war which was there in the 1918 spanish flu currently we have the economic reasons we have various political willingness we have other reasons like the migrant laborers we did not have livelihood people have to move out to earn something to actually fill in their stomachs and thus there are a lot of limitations that the people are facing in their lives due to which the situation of the new strain with the new strain of covid-19 has become even worse and more difficult to tackle so here when we got talk about not learning from the past the article says that both the government and the public failed to learn from the spanish flu as they failed to understand and predict the human behavior and from the very beginning itself it was said that we should be learning from the mistakes of the past and it was already known that always in such pandemics in such flus which have taken place in the past as well the second waves have been more dangerous because of the human behavior but we completely chose to neglect this fact and due to which we unfortunately have to suffer the brunt and these fatalities which we are seeing in the entire world right now and if we talk about india specifically it had the opportunity to learn from the mistakes of other countries which opened after first wave but still we shut our eyes on our willingness and we are now unfortunately facing you know when we are turning our back to the fire ultimately this is at least our back only which will be burned so maybe we will be able to save the face but the back ultimately will be burned so the best only and only option was to light down the fire to just you know extinguish the fire completely now this is just a kind of analogy please do not get confused i only means to uh, you know bring out to the to you the fact that covid 19 if at all we really want to fight and win against covid 19 the only solution is to fight diligently and not take it as anything you know which is reckless but to take it very very carefully and the reasons for india's crisis are two firstly the overconfidence in the government's ability to manage the pandemic so as we said that the government was very much confident and that is why maybe it came up with the idea of hold, hosting the elections and they were quite confident of the fact that they'll be able to handle the pandemic in the second wave but clearly that is in the case second underestimation of the ability of covid-19 to cause infections and deaths in the second wave now i know you must be surprised by something that what i am going to say but there have been people who have come up to the forefront and they are claiming that there is nothing like covid-19 that exists like can you imagine that lakhs and lakhs of people are dying across the globe but yet there are a group of people there is a group of people that does not even acknowledge the existence of covid-19 so this ignorance this underestimation of the ability of covid-19 is another human behavioral problem which has given a wider way to the covid-19 situation to expand and to kill more and more people under its purview 
so definitely we need to learn with these mistakes and we still have time in our hand and we should be more careful and as individuals i would like to take this opportunity to request all of you to please please take care of yourselves if at all you have any symptoms there is nothing bizarre that is going to happen please get yourself tested please take the vaccines and also please make sure that you are maintaining this norm of social and physical distancing and this does not really have to be only with the people who are outside the house but also if at all you're feeling any kind of symptom please make yourself aloof from your family members because i'm sure you love them you care for them and get yourself tested everything is going to be fine trust me and i'm really really um, i would like to take this opportunity to reach out to you guys and request to you all to please stay healthy stay safe and to stay positive not corona positive of course but yes by attitude by behavior we all need to think positive only then we can fight against this disaster in the world anyway let's get started with the second discussion of the day that is about the virus in the village so the article says and points out that there is growing concern about smaller towns and rural areas so it says that the big cities are showing improvements but unlike the previous wave the second wave is trying or it is hitting more in the to the rural areas or the smaller towns so in a way both these articles discuss about the same thing that is the spread or the most or more disastrous impact of the covid-19 second wave so this actually talks about the growing impact of covid-19 in the rural areas so if we at all we talk about the wave differences so during the first wave the rural areas were not much affected now all of us know as there were travel restrictions and there were no large gatherings in the villages and the virus had slow transmission as the villages definitely have lower population and then they're not as densely populated as well and then people live in well ventilated homes work in open fields and comorbidities are lower now by comorbidities here we mean that some kinds of diseases like they might have diabetes like sugar or they might have problems of blood pressure heart ailments etc so they are all considered to be as comorbidities but surprisingly the second wave during the second wave of the covid-19 the rural areas were largely affected the reasons are firstly of course the elections so the vigorous campaigning by the government and surprisingly these campaignings took place even without the basic necessity of masks now definitely this had to had some bad impact on the entire situation and thus the vigorous campaigning huge crowds and frequent visits by outsiders definitely added to the problem and definitely brought in the new strains of covid-19 in the rural areas as well now the second reason is the kumbh mela of course so many villagers they traveled to the festival and returned with the virus so definitely now when lakhs and lakhs of people were gathering uh, beside the uh, coast of ganga beside the bank of ganga so they all were you know very closely densely uh, populated with one another and definitely there was huge and possible chance of carrying the virus from one person to another and that definitely has taken place and thirdly the trojan horse which means erroneously assumed country wide herd immunity and lack of anticipation of second wave now when we talk about the herd immunity in this case what happens is for example there are 100 people who live in one particular community and one by one they have some of the other kinds of symptoms of that particular disease now let's say in this this situation the covid 19 so some might have the complete symptoms some might have only the asymptomatic system now in such a situation what happens is that after some specific period of time the entire community of this 100 people becomes immune to that particular disease because they now have developed the antibodies against that a particular disease so that also many a times is calculated by the means of sero prevalence you must have really heard this uh, entire term which was a lot into news when the sero prevalence of delhi and various other cities was being calculated so we could as much as i can recall in this situation the maximum sero prevalence that delhi could gain was approximately for 25 23 to 25% and still we did not pay any heed to these facts and we assumed by ourselves that we have achieved the herd immunity due to which we completely went out and we became very reckless and did not follow the basic guidelines of covid-19 
So if you talk about the SOP, which is the standard operation procedure for the COVID-19 in the rural areas, so it provided for household visits by the frontline workers for surveillance of the COVID symptoms, which was followed by the rapid antigen testing. So the rapid antigen testing has high rate of false results. Now, this also needs to be kept in mind that the results that come out through the RAT test are not always very reliable. And it recommended the use of drugs like hydrochloroquine queen, and ivermectin. And the benefits are uncertain of both the drugs. So if we talk about the, what are the steps that are needed in this direction, the engagement of local communities such as NSS and NCC. So basically the National Credit Corps and all these things which can help a lending hand, uh, a help, lend a, help, a helping hand to the police officials who are already very overworked and, worked and overstrained. So in such a situation, our own self-policing is a very important factor. So when we ourselves take a promise that we would not be breaking any kind of guideline and we would take care as a responsible citizen, definitely the workload of these officials will reduce. Secondly, emergency transport system. So if, if in this, we all have the system of ambulances, we have the system of oxygen carrying uh, buses, trains, etc. So the such emergency tra transport system should be made smoother. Thirdly, decentralized planning, delivery, monitoring at the district level. So obviously, decentralization of all the resources, all the decision making powers as well should be done in terms of planning, delivery of various services, monitoring at the district level. And finally, prioritize the 45 plus vaccination and provide emergency transportation. Now, as guys, as I was also telling you that we should be getting a vaccinations and all of us should go up for the vaccination. But yes, of course, this doesn't mean that we should completely forget about the priority as to who deserves to be given the vaccine in the first place and who needs the vaccines in the first situation. So definitely the priority should be given to the 45 plus age group and then then when all of this is sort sorted, we also, if at all the surplus is even currently available, we should all go for the vaccination drive. With this, let's see what do we have for news in flash. The DRDO drug. So the first batch of adjunct COVID therapy drug, which is named as 2-deoxy-D-glucose, in short, which is also known as the 2-DG drug, has been developed by the DRDO, which is the Defense Research and Development Organization of India. So, and it has been developed by Dr. Reddy's laboratory was released for the emergency use. Second, Farzad B oil field project. So Iran recently gave the Farzad B gas field to Petropars, which is a domestic gas producer of Iran. Earlier, this was a major, uh, this was a major project for India. And now India has been dropped out by Iran from this particular project, as this gas field was discovered by the ONGC Videsh Limited in the year 2000. And thirdly, Malir Kotla has been into news. So the former princely state of Malir Kotla has now become the 23rd district of Punjab. So special status of Malir Kotla has been given with Sikh community. Uh, it has a with Sikh community. So the 10th Sikh Guru, Guru Gobind Singh, was engaged in a series of battles with oppressive Mughal rules. Specifically, Sher Muhammad Khan was the Nawab of the Malir Kotla. And Muhammad is said to have expressed his anguish at breaking alive of Gobind's two sons. And the image of tolerance of Nawab towards young Sahib Zadas has been seen. So this was all for the day. We hope it was a good session for you. Please uh, stay tuned with Law Seco and subscribe to our channels for such more updates to come daily. Thank you so much.